Who are a company's stakeholders? A lot of people think this just means shareholders, but that doesn't give a full picture of the stakeholders of a firm. There are many people who can both determine or influence the direction of a company and are also affected by the outcome or the success of the company. There are several considerations to determine the influence of various stakeholders on a company. We'll discuss three primary classes of stakeholders and their relationship with the firm. Primary stakeholders are anyone who can influence the direction of the firm. Think the vision and mission statement and how that is carried out. This is especially true when these stakeholders are in control of important resources. Primary stakeholders are affected by the success of the firm or the lack thereof, and they have enforceable claims on the firm's performance. An enforceable claim means that a person has the right to receive the benefit of the success of the company. The three primary classifications of stakeholders are capital market stakeholders, product market stakeholders, and organizational stakeholders. We'll talk about each. Capital market stakeholders include shareholders that own equity in the firm and lenders such as banks that lend money to the firm. Shareholders and lenders are the source of money that firms seek when the company is trying to grow. Shareholders and lenders have different rights related to the firm. In fact, if a company is struggling, such as going through a bankruptcy, the lender gets paid before the shareholder gets anything out of it. Shareholders can affect a firm's direction because of their influence over the board of directors. They also get the benefits of the firm of the firm's success through either dividends or through increasing stock values. Of course, that stock value can go both ways. These dividends and the value of the stock represent the enforceable claims that shareholders have on a company. Lenders are able to influence the firm's direction because of the legal terms that go along with the loans. Sometimes they will require the firm to do certain things in order to protect their investment. Lenders are affected by the success of the company because they have the right to receive both the principal and interest according to the terms of the loan. And these are their enforceable claims, the right to be paid back actually before the shareholders get dividends or any other benefits. Product market stakeholders include suppliers, customers, and host communities. Suppliers can affect the firm's direction because of the inputs that they provide into what the company does. They are affected by the success of the company because a successful company can buy more from them and benefit them as well. Similar to lenders, suppliers actually have the right to be paid back or paid for the supplies that they have provided before shareholders get dividends or other benefits. In fact, they kind of hold a, a debt type position with the company as far as the, the legal um, relationship goes. Customers can affect firm direction because of their influence on the products and services that they buy. And customers often are listened to by firms who are trying to provide something that people will continue to pay them for. Customers are affected by the success of the firm because if they want to buy things and they're something that those customers find to be valuable in their lives, they want a successful firm that can continue to provide that. Customers also have enforceable claims on the company. They have the right to receive what they paid for. If they pay for something that turns out to be faulty or not what was advertised, then they have some rights against that. They also have the right to potentially sue or um, take a company to court if the products or services ever harm them. These also represent enforceable claims. Host communities also fit into this product market stakeholder category because of their influence on the production of the company. Have you ever visited a company town where everything in town revolves around a single company or really was built because of that single company? Hershey, Pennsylvania was built in a rural area near dairies to make milk chocolate and was planned with housing, schools, parks, a zoo, and other amenities for workers to enjoy. While company towns are not the norm anymore, every company is located somewhere and has a relationship with its community. 
host communities can affect a firm's direction because the town and the company are mutually interdependent. They rely on each other for their success. Host communities are affected by the success of the company because a successful company that brings in lots of jobs can directly influence the success of the town. The town also has enforceable claims through taxes and other arrangements that may be made with the company. Organizational stakeholders include executives and employees. The executives are responsible for the development of employees and for overseeing the general day-to-day -day operations and the strategy of the firm. Executives and other employees are affected by the success of the company because of the compensation that they receive in return for doing their jobs. In fact, executives are very strongly affected by the success of the firm because their compensation packages are often designed around the success of the firm. When the firm does well, the executives make more. They're trying to align the incentives of the executives with what the shareholders would want. And of course, employees affect the direction of the firm because they do most of the actual work done in the firm. They may be directed by the executives, but they perform a lot of the day-to-day -day activities that lead to success or failure of the firm. In turn, employees receive compensation, a paycheck, for their work. And good companies also help build their employees through training and development so that the employees are able to be enriched and improve their own abilities as well. Employees' enforceable claims primarily revolve around that paycheck. They have the right to be paid for their work. Each of these stakeholder groups can influence the direction of a firm and have rights to receive the benefits of the success of the firm. So which of these is the most important? A common answer to this is that shareholders are the most important stakeholder group, but they may not always be the most powerful. The most powerful, or what I would say is the most important stakeholder group is the group that is the most influential at a given time, the one that has control over the resources that the company needs to succeed. A long-standing CEO may have more influence than the shareholders, the board of directors, or really any other group. In some situations, a long-standing CEO may be the most powerful stakeholder in the company. In a strong job market, where employees could easily leave the company and go somewhere else for better pay or better jobs, those employees may become the most important or the most powerful stakeholder group. Without employees, the company doesn't succeed, and so the company's efforts and attention may need to be directed on those employees in such a situation. Or when a company needs a loan from a bank, the bank may become the most important or powerful stakeholder at that time. Even if the bank is not your friend, you may need them. These represent just a few stakeholder groups that could be the most important or the most powerful in a given situation. This will change based on the company's situation and based on which stakeholder group is the most critical to be focused on at a given point for the company to succeed. So which stakeholder group is the most important in your company? And why is that? Understanding the role and relationship of each stakeholder group with the company can help firm leaders to prioritize stakeholder groups and their needs and what the company needs from them in order to achieve the best long-term success of the company. I hope you enjoy this video. Have a wonderful day. Take care.